Alrighty, Misfits, let's do this. Um, Misfit Weekly, number one. Uh, the point of this video being to get you guys the information and news that you need uh, to know about these games that are really cool uh, from this week and whether they're for you without any of the fluff. So we're gonna get right to it and hopefully within minutes we can tell you about all of these games. Um, we're gonna start with Curse the Golf that just came out yesterday. Um, this game is really, really awesome. You just need to know what you're getting into uh, before you get into it. Uh, we don't need to speak of the, the, the pixel art. You guys can see that for yourself. This game is fire. It is such a pleasure to look at. Aesthetically uh, and musically, the sound design, everything like that is awesome. It is top notch. 10 out of 10. Um, love looking at this game, the aesthetic, everything like that is beautiful. It is a pleasure to see unfold on your screen. Um, it's marketed as a roguelike, and this is the part that I really want to make a clear distinction um, so you guys know what you're getting into. Um, since then, I beat the game uh, yesterday, day one, um, on my second run. For clarity, um, you have to get, you have to lose once to get one of the major mechanics of the game. They have revealed this on videos and Twitter, so it's not like secret, um, where you can spin the ball. So you can hit the ball and then put spin to it. And in my opinion, this makes the game so much more fun. Um, being able to like hit these shots and bounce and do some crazy platforming, I think is a big part of this game and what makes it special. Um, a lot of these maps and stuff you can almost see as a as a platformer in a way except with the added effect that you have to obviously golf hit this ball and then do these crazy platforming um and where a lot of the fun comes in is also mixing in these cards that you get so you end up buying these booster packs um that i'll show you in a little bit here uh that do crazy th i can show you now actually do, 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 do. Um, you get these booster packs uh, through the money that you gain, and you get random cards in these booster packs that you're going to be using on the stages. Um, these can be things like turn your ball into a rocket that you could control for a little bit, or, you know, let it go through the ground for a little while, set your ball on fire and, like, burn stuff. Um, there's, like, all different types of stuff you can do. And this is where the replayability is going to come in. Would I call this game a roguelike? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, this is a game with set levels. Um, that you will like eventually figure out um, and they're just placed in a random order and that's like it's kind of um, as much as like the emergence that you're gonna get um, what I would rather call it is like just like a replayable uh, golf game right um, and I think that puts like so I guess a lot I had a lot of people ask me like am I gonna get the bang for my buck like it seems like I'm gonna go through it fast I disagree with this you're not gonna fly through the game fast so like I beat it quick but like that was just one playthrough and I saw about 18 19 20 holes not only that I also want to stress the fact that like how you're gonna approach each of these holes is rapidly it's like it's it's widely different um so if you have certain equipment you might be more inclined to take a certain path because you have the equipment to take that path you have the cards but on another run you might have to take a different route and a lot of these stages are like very very meticulously designed so that there's multiple ways that you're going to be going through these courses so you're not going through the course the same way you can't think of it that way you can't be like oh i'm always just gonna oh it's this course again i'm just gonna it depends on what you have so sometimes i'm doing these radical things that i shouldn't be doing because i have like um a u-turn and a rocket so i could like make the ball go upward where it normally wouldn't be able to go and take this path and cut off all this time or you know these crazy jumps so like how you approach these holes is gonna be a lot of the replayability as well um, so overall, I think if you have the right goggles on going into this game and you know what to expect, I think you're going to have a blast. It is so much fun to figure out these courses, go through them. Um, again, I got through the game pretty quick, but I was on the edge of my seat on the final, the final ends of it. Um, how the game progresses, again, you're going to, you you got this kind of like very, very, very light FTL Slay the Spire style map where you're picking the nodes. It's like, hey, do you want money? Um, or do you want a treasure chest with a card in it? Or uh, do you want the elite hole? Or do you want the, the regular uh, stage? And the elite holes are cool. It's because they add a curse every so often. So it's game's gonna pretty much go, hey, in three shots from now, uh, we're gonna give you a curse. You can only hit the ball left um, or something like that. Or you're gonna have to deal with wind. Um, and I really like this. Um, what, what this brings me to is the only downside really that i have with the game which i think is a pretty big oversight after you beat the game there was no like new game plus there is the high score chasing but even that is scarred and i'll explain 
Um, they have high score chasing in the game, which is like how fast can you get through the game with minimal shots? Makes sense, right? But the problem is you can carry over and bank all the cards you want from a run to a future run. So what you can do is, hey, I want to save up all these crazy powerful cards, bank them all, and then take them out on this super run where I have tons of rockets and all this stuff that I'm going to use on that run to make sure that it, I have minimal time and minimal shots I need to clear these holes. Not only can you do that, you could bank 40 cards. 40! Like, that's more than you need on, like, the whole run, pretty much. It's insane. So, I think even the scoring system is super flawed because of this system. I think that's a huge oversight. Um, and the fact that they don't have any new game plus. Like, they already have a curse system in the game. Why can't you start a new run where you get a curse every so often? Like, even something super small like that, I would have been really happy with. That being said, does it need it? No, I still, after beating the game, I really wanted to play more because it's just so fun to play. But if you guys were to come to me and say, hey, like, where can this game improve? Yes, there's absolutely, like, room for improvement. I cannot believe there wasn't, like, a curse run or any, like, new game plus thing. Um, but outside, or like a run where like you chase high score where you can't carry over cards. Like a run is just a run. None of the fluff from like banking tons of cards for a super run. Like, you know what I mean? I, I think those are huge oversights, like really, really huge oversights. But, but despite that, I would still rate this game super, super highly. I think it's really awesome. Um, check it out. You just need to know what you're getting into before you get into it. Um, let's go right to our next game, Backpack Hero. We're flying through these. Um, Backpack Hero just came out um tuesday into early access uh they had a free demo out for a long period of time i think you can still access the free demo on like itch.io or something like that this game i think is the next big thing uh it takes a lot of familiar things like battling in slay the spire or what have you where you can see the enemy's intent and you have to plan around it um, and it takes like those ideas. Oh, you have two mana or three mana to use or four mana or whatever. And you're playing around your items. Um, so all of this is familiar. We're familiar with this stuff from deck builders and stuff like that. But they do it in a way where you're managing a backpack and putting different items in your backpack. And this is so much fun. I can't stress this enough. So you're going to be grabbing different items and creating builds in your backpack. So placement is everything. So you can see over there that the, all those pink things are like bricks, right? And those bricks are heavy. They're going to fall. If nothing is under it that's also heavy, those will fall to the bottom. But you can see they stacked a bunch of heavy things on top of each other so they can just stack it up the middle and them touching each other makes each one more powerful. So you can see like you're going to be using these puzzles to create a build and like, oh, how do I want to position this so it can you know get more effects from other things in my backpack uh so you can see at the bottom it's actually really cute they have a balloon um on the very bottom of the pink pillar and the balloon actually floats but they put it over heavy things so the floating thing is being blocked by the heavy thing that wants to sink and so it's actually trapping it down there which is really awesome um or you can see on the right side they have all the mana that's all connected to each other so the mana items can siphon all the mana out of it so you can see the wand can siphon all that mana so the whole time you're gonna be creating different builds and trying to position it in your backpack with the other things that you're discovering um and i can't stress how fun and awesome this feels it feels so familiar it's like you know looting in diablo or you know some of these old games where you're just throwing everything in your backpack and trying to make it fit but like turn into a game it's so much fun um right behind me you can see some of the events that you're gonna run into like spin the wheel or match cards and buy stuff from the shopkeeper and you pretty much go through the dungeon doing this it's it's really awesome i love that you know the map system gives you all the information you need as well so you can look at the map and be like hey okay these are the kind of people that i'm going to be fighting against let me plan against that okay this is the boss i'm up against and this is a huge thing that games miss right um a lot of times you're just building to build like hey let me just make a powerful build and that's that but um, a lot of things that games miss, roguelikes especially, is like giving the player information to play around, right? This is a big part of replayability because it makes it feel like you're drafting with purpose and not just, hey, this is good. Um, so I really like the direction they're going in. It seems like they're updating it rapidly. There's already another new character coming out. Um, they, there's already three characters in the game that play like pretty wildly different as well. It's super awesome. Um, I can't rate, I can't tell you guys, I can't rate this highly enough. I think this game is the next big thing. I highly, highly re recommend you check it out. And if you're on edge, like try to find the demo and check out the demo because this is, this is big. This is big. I love this game. Um, one of the freshest, but most familiar things, uh, I, games I've seen in a very long time. Let's keep going. Super Bullet Break. 
um was another cute one we found it, you know this one's this one's a really hard one to talk about it's it's interesting it has it's a good game uh good game great it's it's a really good game with really horrible flaws um so if you can get through the flaws it's a great game um what is it super bullet break is kind of like a glorified deck builder so they don't call it cards but they they call them bullets you can see them at the bottom of the screen uh on the slide over there um at the bottom all those different people are kind of like your cards in this game they're called bullets and they all do different things kind of like you're building a deck in a deck builder um so all of that is familiar except you're using a time bar so at the top of the screen over there um you can see that when enemies are going to attack and there's going to be pips before that and so you don't pay mana you pay time so over your bullets you're going to see hey this costs five time to use this costs four time to use and it'll take it out of those pips and you can keep attacking people until they get to the end of the bar so it almost reminds me of a deck builder meets star renegade if you guys have ever played that game it revolves around time so you're creating these really really cool builds based on time not only that all the bullets are going to have like random modifiers on them which they call cartridges i believe or casings um, which can all do random things um, where a lot of it comes in is like you don't really collect artifacts in the game you collect legendary casings for your bullets which is going to be like the background around the bullets you can see like a lot of them are different um, you can get legendary ones that give you passive effects and that's where a lot of your synergies are going to come from it's it's really really fun and it's really well done but then comes the biggest flaws of the game which is the ui the user interface is terrible it is so bad um one you can see that it's like made for controller and switch in mind and the it, those icons and like different settings and stuff don't change at all um they did not look into this at all i think they just wanted to push it out the door it's so bad that like even if you're playing on pc and playing on keyboard or whatever when you go to like change the controls and stuff they just show you the switch controls that's it it's just a switch controller with the switch you can't do anything about it it's 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 it, i can't stress it and it doesn't stop there it's like um you can't just like click on a card and like look at like the different keywords you kind of have to do this like weird thing where you pull up a keyword panel and then like hover over all the cards or you can turn on an options to always have keywords on but if you do that as soon as you mouse over one of your bullets all the keywords pop up over the screen and like they don't go away it doesn't like like in other games like we solved this already right like you hover over a card long enough the tooltip will pop up right so you can sit there look at it and then the tooltip will pop up like we've solved these things this game has none of it this game like did is not up with the times at all it's taking all the problems that we solved over the last few years and just like act like they never saw any of it and they're just trying to figure it out for the first time or something um so yeah and it, it, it and i gotta say it like doubles down right it gets worse than that um one of the things in the game i think i have here um they have data the data if you look uh, above me is categories you can see that each character has random categories and these are just categories for the sake of them having categories and they just make up stuff so it'll be like monochrome you know king rash beach ball uh devil or like something and, and each character has like six of these and they're just random to have them so then you'll have somebody else um that says like hey uh beach ball people uh get extra damage and it's like okay well that doesn't really help me there's uh i think like almost 200 bullets in this game I, how the hell do i remember who has beach ball and then the only way to do it is to literally go in your deck mouse over all of your bullets and see who has this beach ball tag like there's no ui to help you you're supposed to just it's it's so tedious um but like i also want to talk about the beauty of the game each character has this drawn out art not only that every like special character in the game also has voice lines and stuff it's it's insane like they put effort into this game it's really really cool that's why i want to talk about it it has the biggest flaws ever the ui is awful like i just wish they talked with like a professional before they released this thing but like the game like not after you beat an area like a three acts like a whole run in another game you go to a whole new like biome where you do three acts there and have its own people and its own cards bullets that you find it's crazy and there's a lot of those right there's a lot in this game it just sucks that it's so horribly flawed as well it's like so much homework to just get navigate the game
Um, so, um, it's still worth talking about if you can get through those downsides that I talked about and you want to do a lot of homework. This game is actually awesome. You get so much bang for your buck if you can get through the aesthetic as well. Um, it was definitely worth talking about. Okay, this brings me to the last game that we're going to talk about today, Roller Drome. This was the biggest surprise in a long time. Um, I saw the trailer for this game. What is it? It's you on rollerblades shooting people. And that's exactly what the trailer showed. I gotta tell you guys that after seeing the trailer, I was kind of like, meh, it looks cool. I get it, right? Rollerblades and guns, I get it. And it's just like one of those gimmicky things that they sell you on the idea of like, hey, it's rollerblades with guns, you should get our game, right? And I see this kind of stuff all the time. Man, was I so happy that I got sent a, a copy to try this game out. I am so surprised. The trailer does not do this justice. This game is awesome, but it's one of those games that you have to feel it and get into it to believe it. Uh, just how they, you know, give you this complete control over your character to get around and just moving around the stages is so much fun because it's kind of like, Tony Hawk style, right? So you're gonna be having complete control of doing these backflips and grinding and doing all this cool stuff. Um, but like how they designed it is so awesome. Nothing feels like they just did it as a gimmick. Um, and so what I mean by that is like, then they, they teach you how to do all these cool tricks and backflip and, and then aim while backflipping and aiming while shooting. So you can kind of control the movement and the what your character is doing, but like also aim at the same time. In a way, this makes it feel like Tony Hawk meets my best friend Pedro, if that makes sense. Like your character is doing something like acrobatics, but then you're also like aiming and shooting at the same time as like two different things that you're functioning with. Um, but how this feels is just so well executed. So you're going to be going around and you're going to be doing all these tricks to reload your guns. And this becomes like this big dance. Um, so you're going to be dodging and doing tricks to reload your guns. And then you're also going to be shooting and doing combat at the same time. But the way this all flows together, is just so freaking well done. I can't stress it enough. Um, even things like, like landing on your head while you're flipping, right? And you didn't space it right. It never slows down. Like even if you land on your character's head, they'll just like roll out of it. And this is just so well thought out. It's not like they just adopted ideas from other games. Like, okay, this is where you fall and then you get punished or whatever. Like they did not want this game to slow down. And you could tell that they thought about it every inch of the way. Another thing that was scaring me before I played it is like the enemy design in the trailer. It just seemed like you're like shooting at turrets, right? Like everyone's just standing there like, but like, no, when you play this game, it really starts to come to life. Everyone's making you run around. There's these snipers that you're dodging in the air and people leaving fire on the ground. Um, like it, it really, you have to experience it. It's so freaking cool. And then the game gets deeper and deeper. Um, there's, you know, the shotgun where you have to time it correctly and if you time it correctly you shoot a slope shot instead and you can like stun people for a little while um or perfect dodging and it turns out that you can perfect dodge into slow-mo to get like this crazy super saiyan boost damage for a little while it's and the, and the mechanics just keep adding into each other um how the story unfolds is never forced either it's very subtle and in the background but also like deep so you're going through and like you can pick up these little post-it notes to get some of the story and how they talk in the background the announcer really like fills in the world on like why you're here and why these people volunteered to be against you it's so awesome this game like blew me away this is my biggest surprise um it feels so fun to play um i i i think this is one of my biggest surprises in the last couple weeks couple months I just didn't see this one coming. I, I almost slept on it. Um, this is probably one of my favorite games this week. Roller Drome, definitely check it out. It's on a massive discount right now. I believe it's like $10 off, so it's usually $30, it's $20. Um, let's also talk about real quick the... It brought me right back to the Tony Hawk days where on each map, you get these random quests that you can do. Hey, grind this thing. Do this trick over this place, right? Just like you would back in the day in the Tony Hawk games. But even that, they do so well. Like, to the point where they're not trying to, like, artificially inflate playtime. So, like, right there on the list when you're about to go into the level, they'll tell you exactly how to do what they want you to do. So, if they're like, hey, do a coffin 360 over this area and it'll give you the little instructions on like hey coffin to do a coffin it's a uh, right right x you just hold it right and it'll tell you right there and i remember even back in the day you would have to like go through this huge 
like move less than find the move to like learn how to do it and this game doesn't want to waste your time they're like here this is how you do it go do it and it's to the point where like even like you could just boot in a level like bust out that objective and then back out of the level it's not even like you have to beat the level successfully and like if they just want you to have fun and you could tell that like go bang out these missions and jump back out of the mission if you want right like you don't have to complete the level just go do it and i love that it's not there to waste your time or artificially inflate play time it is straight to the point right and that was so fresh too and it's funny because i'm grateful for these things that are like pretty basic but in today's age where all these games want to inflate of artificially inflate playtime run these treadmills unlock all these things first and you know die a couple times and increase all this meta right it just feels so fresh to play i can't stress about like how cool this game was so um that's gonna be it for uh the misfit weekly i hope you guys enjoyed i tried to get through this all as fast as i could it looks like we're wrapping it up right at the 20 minute mark but that was like four or five different games so i'll take it um let me know what you guys thought hopefully this uh informed you about all these games and whether they're for you or not um thank you guys so much misfits out